Hey, what is up, everybody? I'm here to give you my WWE Monday Night Raw review uh, for October 20th, 2014, and uh, this was a pretty good Raw, actually. Um, thought this, uh, I thought they've been picking up their game the past couple of weeks. I thought uh, this, these couple of Raws have been uh, pretty good, so uh, I'll uh, talk to you about it. So it starts off, well, we get JBL, Michael Cole, and Jerry the King Lawler on commentary. And it kicks right off with the authority, which consists of Triple H, um, Corporate Kane, Randy Orton, and Seth Rollins. And he pretty much hypes up the uh, Hell in a Cell pay-per-view and talks about uh, how he's won more in a Hell in a Cell matches than anybody ever in the WWE. Um, and uh, talks about how he's been inside the cell. And uh, Triple H... Um, Uh, Seth Rollins ends up, uh, he actually hypes up Randy Orton and Seth Rollins like they're going to beat John Cena and Dean Ambrose in their matches, and he hypes up the authority, Corporate Kane, Seth Rollins, and Randy Orton like they're going to beat Dean Ambrose and John Cena in the street fight tonight, and then, uh, he calls Seth Rollins Mr. Money in the Bank, and he says he likes that nickname and all, but he wants to be known as the undisputed future of the WWE, and, um... Randy Orton says that uh, he uh, his match is like the main event and yeah, he's all that stuff. And then uh, he says he's going to destroy John Cena. And then Triple H makes John Cena, uh, and he says he's going to end a decade of a feud between John Cena and um, Randy Orton. And then um, Triple H adds a stipulation of John Cena and Randy Orton's Hell in a Cell match that whoever wins... Um, at some point down the road, we'll get to face Brock Lesnar for the WWE World Heavyweight Championship. So I think we obviously know who's going to win if you didn't obviously know already. Um, then we get the first match. I think it, it was, uh, Sheamus and Jimmy and Jay the Usos versus Gold and Stardust. And it was supposed to be, um, The Miz, but then The Miz changed his mind and had Damian Mizdow do the match. Just to give him, like, an opportunity. And he also talked about... And um, he ended up doing commentary for the match. And something that I thought was awesome about this was... Uh, the the Usos cut, like, a little video screen promos that they usually do before the match. And they accidentally show Golden Stardust is, um, instead of uh, the Usos. But they talked about how they're going to regain the WWE Tag Team Championships. Because... Uh, we found out that Golden Stardust are going to defend the WWE Tag Team Championships against the Usos. And then, um, we find out that, uh, and then Golden Stardust cut another promo of oh, how the, this, this isn't science fiction anymore. It was like the, and, uh, I thought it was good stuff. And we also found out that, uh. We also found out that uh, it's going to be shame. Well, I already knew this, but if you didn't know, it's going to be Sheamus versus defending his U.S. title against The Miz. And this was a pretty good match. Um, Miz Dow and uh, the Dust, Golden Star Dust, dominate one of the Usos for a while, and then he gets the hot tag on Sheamus. And uh, then afterwards, Finn starts breaking down, and um, the one of the Usos dives on Gold Dust. And Stardust does a uh, fallen star on, uh, I think that's what he called it, on Gold, Gold Dust and the, um, one of the Usos. And then Sheamus dived on um, everybody um, on the outside. And then um, he was going to hit the ball kick on Damian Mizdow, but <clears throat> Stardust came in and he got it instead. And Damian Mizdow rolled up Sheamus and got the win. So I was happy with that because I, I like Damian Mizdow and I really think it's awesome that he got the win. And afterwards, the Miz acted like he won it. I thought it was good stuff. Um, and then we got uh, Triple H backstage and Randy Orton comes up and thanks him for that title shot. And then... Um, Triple H says, I have confidence in you that you, you got this. You need this match. And Randy Orton says he's going to beat Brock Lesnar and walk into WrestleMania um, as WWE World Heavyweight Champion like he did last, like he did this year. 
And uh, Triple H even says that it's Seth Rollins. It was all Seth Rollins' idea. Um, and then uh, Randy Orton says, I'm going to go thank Seth Rollins. So you're going to find out what happens with this. And then we get the Wyatt family a, a video package. Uh, this was a mat. This was all the video package they had been doing the past couple weeks, all combining into one. So the Wyatt family, by the way, consists of Boy Wyatt, Luke Hopper, and Eric Rowan. So it's coming, but we don't know what it is yet. So we're going to see what it is. And then um, we get AJ Lee versus Alicia Fox with Paige Winside. And the match was okay. I've been seeing it a lot lately, so that's probably why I'm not into this mat match as much as I used to be. And Paige attacks Alicia Fox like she's turned on her and is it a friend. And then uh, Paige distracts AJ Lee and Alicia Fox rolls her up for the win. And it was all a big trap. Um, this sets up because AJ Lee at Hell in a Cell is going to defend the Divas Championship against Paige. Which I think is awesome. That match is going to be awesome. I think that's a, that match should get a Hell in a Cell match instead of John Cena and Randy Orton. They've had one already and they shouldn't even be wrestling each other. But I really, that would be cool if they did a Diva Hell in a Cell match. AJ Lee versus Paige for the Divas title. That would have been awesome, but we don't get to see that now. Um, and then Seth Rollins is backstage, and Randy Orton comes up and thanks him for his title shot. And he's like, just stay out of my business. Don't be uh, giving me title shots. I can get them on my own or something. And then Seth Rollins says he was just looking out for him. He's the team player. And he says uh, that when you beat Brock Lesnar, the future will just work it out itself, and then he puts up his briefcase, because obviously you know why. If, um, then the next match, uh, Randy Orton comes out and cuts a promo, and this was a s segment between John Cena and Randy Orton that I really don't care about, mainly because we've seen these segments countless times. They talk about how they've been in the WWE since 2002, uh, blah, blah, they've, uh, feuded for a while, John Cena's like a punk-ass kid, um, that he, still the punk-ass rapper that he was back then, and he can't hang with him, blah, 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 uh, John Cena comes out, and Randy Orton, by the way, kept talking about how the Royals, or whatever the baseball team name of, uh, Kansas is, are gonna win a Super Bowl for, like, another 29 years, um, and John Cena, they hyped that up all night, and John Cena says uh, that uh, they will win a Super Bowl and all that stuff. And that Randy Orton runs his mouth. Randy Orton even talked about how he beat John Cena this year. Um, and he's going to do it again and beat, beat the beast Brock Lesnar. And then uh, Paul Heyman came out, which made this a lot better. And he talked about how these are the graduates of 2002. But Brock Lesnar's even more, even better because he beat The Rock. Um, and he was the undisputed champion. And now he's the undisputed champion today. He doesn't say it like that, but that's pretty much what he says. Um, and he talks about how whoever wins this match Sunday pretty much becomes a loser because uh, they have to go one-on-one -on -one with the beast incarnate Brock Lesnar. And he, he talks about how Randy Orton doesn't want to go up against Brock Lesnar. And then he tells Cena that he wants to go up against uh, Lesnar, but he's going to just destroy him. And then Cena is going to give uh, Paul Heyman the AA. And then um, he puts him down for some reason. I didn't get it. And then Randy Orton hits an RKO on him, which I definitely saw coming. Then afterwards, he's going to walk out um, with Paul Heyman. And he acts like it, but then he just RKO's Heyman. And... I wonder if they're going to turn him face. It seems like they are. Because these vines... He didn't really seem to get over, but I wonder if it was because he assaulted the Kansas Royals. So that might be it, but we'll see. And then, uh... We get Rusev with Lana versus Big E. What happened to Big E? He used to be like an Intercontinental Champion. He was having good matches with Dean Ambrose, um, Cesaro, Jack Swagger. And now he's nothing. So I don't know what happened to Big E, but uh, Rusev beats him with the accolade. Um, yeah, uh, but then afterwards, uh, Lana cuts a promo about how Rusev is going to fail. I don't know how, how, how Big Show is going to fail to beat him at Hell in a Cell. And then um, he talks about how uh, <clears throat> Big Show's like a guy at the circus. They just It's just a big guy at the circus. They just throw food at him. And then... Um, Rusev says he's going to destroy Big Show and he's going to take his hat out and rip it out. 
and then um sorry about this and then uh they go to like they th they try to get the Russian flag down and I didn't think there was gonna be a flag set up since the hell in the cell was there but there was well um and then uh, the the Russo and Lana get pissed that the flag doesn't come down and then the big show comes up on the screen and instead the American flag comes down um and Russo is gonna tip it over like Big Show did. And one of the American soldiers that usually, usually, because usually on the wrestling shows, they always invite the American, the troops, um, tries to jump in the ring and try to attack Rusev with obvious reasons. And then the security tries to hold him back and Rusev kicks him in the head, which I thought was awesome. I thought that really got him some heat. I'm glad they did this. It was awesome. Um, and then uh, afterwards, uh, Big Show had come out. He helped the guy to the back. And Big Show uh, is just distraught that that happened because he feels like that it's his fault. And he says that he's going to um, beat up Rusev and do it. For, and he, he talks about how you shouldn't, you just don't attack an Amer um, a U.S. troop. And he says he's going to beat Rusev at Hell in a Cell. And uh, he also said, too, that you don't want to know what's going through my mind right now. And he says he doesn't want to wait till Hell in a Cell. So he calls out Rusev. He never shows up. And then um, he go, Rusev, Big Show goes to the back to find Rusev. And he goes to his dressing room, and he's not there, so then he just walks out. And I thought they were going to come back to it, but they didn't, so I was kind of mad about that. Uh, and then Dean Ambrose was backstage, and he was watching Kane's new movie, See No Evil 2. And then, um, I guess to train for uh, the match that uh, they're going to have, the street fight tonight, um, to see how d crazy uh, Kane is. Um, and uh, John Cena says, we can't be... Doing stuff like this, uh, this is how you train. We gotta actually train and we gotta work out strategy. And Dean Amber says, It's okay, we're just like Superman and Batman teaming up. And then, uh, John, Dean Amber says the strategy is, uh, no matter, we just keep throwing fists at him. And if they keep, and, um, if we go down tonight, we're gonna take some guys with us. And John Cena says he's like his strategy. And Dean Amber says that he's not Batman, he's the Joker, which I thought was pretty cool. Um, and then we got Bree Bella versus Summer Rae, and Bree Bella wins with the face buster. Did you guys really think Summer Rae was going to beat Bree Bella, considering the fact that Bree Bella was able to beat her with one arm but tied behind her back when she had Layla in her corner? Really? Um, and Nikki Bella was watching on the TV, a TV backstage, and they're going to have a match at um, Hell in a Cell, and if whoever loses has to be uh, the other person's assistant, um, for, uh, a month, and, uh, and if you refuse, you have to quit, so I, I, I will get my predictions on that when I get there, um, and then Dean Ambrose comes out to cut a promo, now this was fucking awesome, he comes out with a duffel bag, and he sits down in a chair, and said that he's been dreaming for a while to get this match with Seth Rollins, and, uh, this is just such awesome shit. And, uh, he, uh, pulls out the duffel bag, and it's a s dummy of Seth Rollins, and he talks about how much of a traitor he is, and, uh, he wins, like, these cheesy puns, like, says, uh, that, uh, I gotta hand it to you, Seth, you, uh, I, I don't wanna break, and he's like, I know one of you wanna get in the house, so you don't wanna break your hands, but don't worry, I'll... Do it, I'll break your hands. And then he breaks, like, the mannequin's, hand, the, the mannequin's hands. And then, um, he says, uh, you really screwed me over. I'm gonna screw you over. And he takes out a screw and, uh, gouges it into Seth Rollins' teeth. And then he says, you know, I had a dream last night that I saw you, um, inside Hell in a Cell. So then, uh, no, that I saw you with whatever testicles you have left. Uh, that I saw the test, whatever testicles, that I saw your testicles, that's what it, but then he says, uh, you don't, but Seth, you don't have any testicles left, you, left, considering the fact that, uh, because he pulled out a saw, and before that he had made a cheesy pun with the hammer, like, I'm gonna hammer you down, and he said he was gonna saw his testicles off, but he doesn't have any testicles because he gave them up to the authority, and then, um, he, uh, takes out the little hot dog thing that he has that you, that was like a hot dog spatula, and, um, starts pinching Seth Rollins' testicle, the mannequin's testicles, and, um, afterwards, uh, Seth Rollins and, um, his backup, Jamie Noble and Joey Mercury come out, 
and Seth Rollins says uh, that this is why I'm the brain that, that uh, you finally found a friend that has uh, just as much brains as you do and then um, he says uh, Seth Rollins um, is going to beat him in Hell in a Cell and Dean Ambrose says I'm going to give you a hand and he throws the hand outside the ring and um, Seth Rollins says he's going to beat him in Hell in a Cell because uh, he's going to beat him and uh, he's going to because he's smarter than him and then um, he says, I don't even sweat you. And then before he can really come in the ring, Mick Foley comes out, which was a surprise. I was not expecting Mick Foley to come out. And he pretty much gives him like a big pep talk about what Hell in a Cell is like. How it ended his career, because he talks about that match he had with Undertaker, which I am going to watch this week. I'm not going to give you a view on the channel, because I already have that review. Because I did the uh, Hell in a Cell DVD review. And if you check that video out, then um, you will see my review on that channel. Um... And he talks about how uh, his uh, teeth, um, he, he had a missing tooth and it went up his nose. Um, how he went through thumbtacks and how he, he doesn't really remember the match that much. And I, I went to see Vic Foley at some sort of restaurant in uh, Cape Cod. And he talked about that story. So, And uh, he says, uh, any day, any time, any, uh, any speci special time I would have picked... If it was you two facing each other, I would have gone with Seth Rollins. And then Seth Rollins was like, I thought you guys were old. I thought you were old, Mick Foley, but and had and had nothing left. But you know how to make a good decision. And then Seth Rollins, and then Mick Foley says, any special, well, any special time. But this Hell in a Cell is no special time because you have to be crazy inside this Hell in a Cell, like Dean Ambrose is. So he's really going to do whatever it takes to put it all on the line. And Dean Ambrose talks about how he has the brains and he doesn't need to be crazy like you two. And Dean Ambrose even said to Mick Foley, "How you get, how you get me? You know that I can, that I'm crazy, that I'm looking forward to this match." And then uh, Mick Fo and then um, Mick Foley said too that there's gonna be scars um, afterwards, and there's gonna be emotional pain when you enter this in the Hell in a Cell, and um, I wishes them luck. And I thought it was awesome stuff. Um, and then afterwards. Um, Dean Ambrose um, goes to hit Rollins with the chair, but he escapes, and then uh, he throws the mannequin outside the ring onto uh, Noble, Rollins, and uh, Joey Mercury. I thought that was awesome stuff, and it was cool to see Mick Foley uh, tonight. I actually thought they were going to make him the special guest referee um, for uh, the Hell in a Cell match, which would have been cool, but I guess not. Um, and he even talked about, too, how he was wearing Santa Claus attire, because Dean Seth Rollins made fun of him for it. And Mick Foley says if he could change anything about, if he looks at his career from post Hell in a Cell to after, um, his career was better before. So I thought it was awesome stuff. And then um, Cesaro went one on one with Dolph Ziggler. It was actually a really good match. Um, Dolph Ziggler hit the um, X Factor when he uh, when Cesaro tried to power bomb him, but he kicked out of it. And then uh, Cesaro hit an uppercut on him for the win, and it was good. Um, Made Cesaro look good, and uh, probably going to lead to an uh, IC title match at uh, Hell in a Cell since, he beat, since Cesaro beat the IC champion. And then afterwards, he laid him out with the neutralizer. I thought they made Cesaro look good here. And then the authorities backstage, and uh, Seth Rollins and Randy went out getting the lawn. And Triple H says, you guys need to suck it along because we need to focus and take out Dean Ambrose and John Cena tonight. And he makes Kane, corporate Kane the general. And... Then the corporate Kane says the same thing, and yeah, that was it. And then we get the Hell in a Cell pre-show. I wrote this down so I wouldn't forget what it is. And we're gonna get Miz TV with no, we're gonna get Miz Dow TV with special guest The Miz, which I think is actually gonna be awesome. I'm, I can't wait to see that because I'm really enjoying the uh, Miz Dow stuff, Damian Miz Dow stuff, and uh, the panel is gonna be Paul Heyman, Booker T, Alex Riley, and Renee Young. Um, they're really hyping up all this stuff, um, and it's gonna be at, and it's gonna start at seven o'clock. So we'll see what happens. Um, and then they went to the how to sell by numbers, which I thought was weird. They never done this before, and it's like the Royal Rumble when they talked about the statistics. That's what they did, and the statistics um, were really awesome. Um, I thought um, they did some good statistics. Like uh, uh, you can just check out the video if you want to see it. But how uh. Triple H and Undertaker have won the most Hell in a Cell matches because they both won six, and Hell Undertaker had has the most appearance because I think he has like twelve, 
and how 29 people have ended Hell in a Cell, and 18 of them never went in and again, um, and how six people have, uh, are the most people to ever enter a Hell in a Cell match. We fell into that Hell in a Cell match that Kurt Angle, The Rock, Rikishi, um, Stone Cold Steve Austin, and The Undertaker had. I think that's everybody. Um, and then um, how Randy once made six appearances also inside Hell in a Cell. Um, how 42 minutes and I think like 12 seconds the longest Hell in a Cell match, which is uh, Shawn Michaels and Triple H and how... Uh, at WrestleMania, when Undertaker and Triple H had their match, um, it was like a bunch of people were watching, and I forget how many, it was like a lot of people, um, however many people were at WrestleMania 28, and they typed up the matches that uh, John Cena and Randy Orton and Dean Ambrose and Seth Rollins are having by saying that Orton and Cena had fought in it before, and Rollins and Ambrose are fighting for uh, Apocalypse or something. I thought it was awesome. Um... And then we get John Cena and Dean Ambrose versus Corporate Kane, Randy Orton, and Seth Rollins in a street fight. I thought this was going to be a typical street fight at first. Um, but, the, but then a little bit of me knew that this was going to be good considering the fact that Dean Ambrose is fucking crazy and he's awesome. So um, I thought this was um, awesome shit. Um, they just start out with this big brawl at first and uh, Ambrose and Cena fight them off. And... Uh, he uh, eventually is starting to get dominated, so then uh, he goes on the announcer's table. And, well, no, he's not getting, he's dominating Seth Rollins, so then uh, he uh, takes down the announcer's table and is going to do something to him, but then uh, Orton and Corporate Kane try to attack him, and Cena goes after him, and then Ambrose does an elbow off the announcer's table on everybody, including Cena, and then he takes out a chair and hits Rollins with it. And he was going to take out a table, but then Corporate Kane stalked him and slammed Dean Ambrose on the table. And uh, Orton Kane and uh, Seth Rollins uh, actually dominated Dean Ambrose for a while. And um, Rollins and Orton kind of were starting to get along, but there was this one point where uh, Orton tagged himself in and Rollins looked pissed about it. But then eventually Dean Ambrose made um, the hot tag to Cena and he did his five moves of doom. And, uh, he brings out a table, and, uh, he was gonna, well, for, well, actually, A.A. Kane, and then he brought out the table, and he was gonna do it with the Seth Rollins, but, uh, he was able to move out of the way, and he hit, uh, I think a, um, an Insiguri, um, and, no, he threw Cena through the, a, through a chair that was wedged into the turnbuckles, and then, um, Kane takes out Dean Ambrose with the boot, and he hit, and Orton and Kane, uh, no, Orton throws Ambrose into the steps, and, uh, Kane hits Ambrose with the steps, and then um, Kane gets tagged in and uh, throws Cena over the announcer's table, throws him into the steps, and throws him into the steel post, and then Corporate Kane throws Cena through a table, and you know, he, Corporate Kane has a uh, has somebody lower down the cell, which was awesome, and when Ambrose almost, I thought Ambrose was going to get locked out and Cena was going to get beat down, but he made it in in time. And Ambrose gets the hot tag and uh, goes off on everybody. And he actually ended up drop kicking Seth Rollins into the cell. And he was going off on Randy Orton. He was hitting him with a kendo stick. He elbowed. Him. He did an elbow while he had a chair with the chair on Randy Orton. And um, he dived on Rollins and Orton. And Orton ended up throwing him into the steel post. And he was going to finish him off with the IKO. But then um, Cena came in and uh, tried to. Well, at. Um, AAM, but then Kane came in and was gonna. No, Cena AA'd somebody. I forget. Um, no, he was gonna AA Orton, but then uh, Kane choke slammed him. And then um, Ambrose d gave uh, the, the double arm DDT to Kane, and then o he went to go off the ropes to do his clothesline, and then Orton gave him an RKO for the win. And then afterwards, Seth Rollins like, immediately hit the curve stomp on Randy Orton. And stood tall inside the Hell in a Cell. And that was the end of the show. Um, and this was an awesome show. Um, I liked every... Uh, not everything, but I liked most things. The uh, main event. Uh, this tension between Randy Orton and Seth Rollins. The segment that Dean Ambrose and Seth Rollins had. And the uh, Big Show Lucev stuff was good tonight. And I liked the six-man tag team match between Sheamus and the Usos versus Gold and Stardust and the Miz... No, and Damian Mizdow. And Cesaro and Dolph Ziggler was good. Uh, that's about it. And 
I thought it was all good stuff, and that's pretty much it, guys. So I'll, I'll probably be back tomorrow, because, uh, well, tomorrow at, like, 2 in the morning, because I'm probably going to be doing a, uh, they're doing that DX Confidential thing after the show, and I'm going to, uh, watch that and give you my review of that and see what it's like. So that's pretty much it, guys. Peace out.